In the third and final episode of the Going With The Flow series today, we are going all out. I'm going to show you how to incorporate these beautiful fantasy films into an acrylic pour and even teach you step by step along the way how to do a bloom swipe without pillow paint. Today's video is full of ups and downs, but in the end, I think you're going to love it. So let's get started. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, thank you so very much for joining me. And if it's not, thank you for joining me. <laughs> I'm in a silly mood today. Please don't mind me. Anyway, I'm so, 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 so excited to show you the third and final piece in the Going With The Flow series. So if you haven't seen the first two videos of this series, I'm going to try to remember to link them in the description below. But as always, you can just go to my channel, click on the video tab, and they will all be there in a row, you know, as they are released. So <laughs> I got these most beautiful fantasy films and I want to show you how to incorporate them into your acrylic pouring art. Now, what's so great about these fantasy films? Well, first, they're going to add the most beautiful color shifting effect into your painting, no matter how you add them in. I mean, look at this stuff. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. This one is called Aurora Borealis. And it's just absolutely delicious. I mean, come on now. This one here, I believe, is a blue, butterfly blue or something like that. I can't remember the name. But they have a ton of different colors. And I'll make sure that I put the link for where to buy these in the description. And they are very inexpensive. Okay, so they sell them in three foot long, I think they're about four inches wide, uh, samples. And I think this one was $1.67, so really, really inexpensive. So the amazing thing about these foils is that you can heat them and look at what happens. Look at that. I mean, come on now. That is just absolutely fantastic. So what I'm going to do, because typically you would use something like this in resin. You would add it into your coasters or your resin artwork, mixed media. I'm going to attempt, however, to add it into an acrylic pour. So it will be an effect in our piece when it is finished. But look at that, it is just mesmerizing. So, the way that you melt this, let me show you that first, is you just take your heat gun, right, you cut a piece the size that you want. I don't know how much I'm gonna need yet, so let me just cut a good piece here. And you'll notice I'm wearing gloves. I don't want to get my fingerprints all over it. So to heat this stuff, again, all you need is your heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun and have a little embossing tool, that will work. I've done this with Tyvek paper. It's the same kind of uh, thing where you heat it and it starts to bubble up. You have to be patient. If you go too fast, It'll get too hot and just start to melt and give you holes in the surface. You want to go really slow. Put your heat gun or your embossing tool on low and just slowly hover over the surface. Okay, don't get too close. I'm going to start about 
six to eight inches away and slowly get closer and closer. So here we go. And I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna time lapse this, I'm gonna show you how long it takes. So on low, full heat, high as it goes. So right now I'm about six inches away and I'm just going in a circular motion and you're gonna see it start to kind of ripple, start bubbling up, okay? If it starts to move on you, you can put your finger on one corner, just don't burn yourself. So now I'm a little closer and I'm about five inches away. I don't know if you can see it yet, starting to get that like turtle, tortoise shell look. Right? Just take your time with it. It's going to shrink a little bit on you. Can you see that happening there? See it rippling up? Just keep going until you see all those bubbles form over the entire piece. All right, just like that. So now the cool thing is, just like with Tyvek paper, again, I've shown you that multiple times on this channel, you can use the front or you can use the back. Because the back has, and I know it's very hard to see this, the back has a, a really cool look too. So whichever side you want to use, you can use. Okay, enough drooling over this beautiful film. So now how about I show you how you can do the bloom technique without a pillow paint. Alrighty, so typically I do not measure, but for you, I'm going to show you what you have to do to mix up these paints. These directions are for a medium body type of paint, like an Arteza paint, Amsterdam that I'm using today, Atelier, uh, Liquitex, Artist Loft in a Tube, that type of paint. So for the amount of paint, I'm putting in 0.75 ounces. So not a full ounce. For the untinted house paint base, I am adding in the same exact amount. So it's a one to one ratio. Once I add that in, I will then come in and put in 0.25 ounces worth of Joe Sonia varnish. That is how all of my colors are mixed up. Now, this may be confusing for new pore artists. You hear the term house paint, and I'm telling you that in today's video, we are not using a pillow paint. The product I'm cutting out is that white house paint. You still need to use an untinted house paint to make your colors. And you're going to use that untinted house paint to make your pillow paint. So essentially you're cutting out that one big can of white paint. I'll talk about that more in a minute. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in small amounts of water at a time. I added the water in increments of 0.15 ounces. So in the end, I did that three times, which means the amount of water I used was 0.45. So almost a half an ounce of water. That's how I mixed all of my colors and the pink paint that I'm going to use for my base paint again. We are cutting out that pillow paint, that extra can of paint that you buy to throw on the canvas before you put your colors down. It's totally unnecessary, believe it or not. People just, well, I won't speak for everybody. I buy it because I use a lot of white paint, so it's just easier to put that down. 
But if you're in a bind and don't have any, or you just want to cut out that part and buy that one can of untinted paint, uh, base paint and not the white paint, you can absolutely do that. So now I'm mixing up a pigment. A pigment is going to be pretty simple, okay? But I'm still going to measure it for you. I put into the cup exactly one ounce of the untinted base paint. And then to that, I added a few scoops of the pigment. You'll notice, however, the scale does not change because the pigment has no weight. So there is no measurement for that. As you saw, I did four scoops with a small popsicle stick. Once that was done, I put in 0.25 ounces of the Joe Sonia varnish. So I have this sped up for, you know, time reasons. And um, you can see that I'm mixing fast here, but when using something like a pigment or a mica powder, you want to make sure you first mix it in slow so it doesn't poof back up in your face. For the pigments, I do not need to add any water. They are the perfect consistency mixed with just the varnish and the untinted base. So for today's video or piece, I should say, I want to create a mother of pearl effect. So I'm going to use all of the interference colors, which are red, violet, green, blue, and gold. And then I have two other pigments there that I mixed up, a sea glass and this beautiful hydrangea. And um, then I'm going to have just one tube paint color, which is that light blue. The background I'm choosing to use is pink, very light pink, only because I want a really strong pink red color shift in the painting. So now the last step we need to do is the cell activator. So Pixel Paint Designs in Florida sells Australian Floetrol with a discount. So if you need Australian Floetrol, get it through her. She's the only one that offers a 10% off discount code in the United States that I know of. Um, and the shipping, like I said, right from Florida, it's really fast. So if you need it, that's the place to get it. The measurements for the cell activator were as follows. I used 25.25 ounces of each white and pink to make a light pink. I then added in a total of 1.25 ounces of the Australian Floetrol. And that's it. Our cell activator is done. I made two other colors also. So what I'm going to do is I have the Amsterdam pink and white that I made for the base. Now here's how this bloom painting is different, the ingredients that I'm using. Typically when I do or when you see anybody create a bloom painting, they put a house paint down first, a uh, white pillow paint or, a, you know, a different color pillow paint. This here is actually made the same way I made my colors, just with the untinted deep base and the Joe Sonia varnish. So technically, you can do a, a bloom without having that white pillow paint underneath. I've done them before, and it works fine. So that's one product that you could technically cut out if you wanted to. I have a video out there where I showed you how to do this, but yeah, I mixed this We'll call it a pillow paint for, you know, the technique that we're doing, but it's not a, an actual pink wall paint that I bought, okay? It's the untinted base paint with the Joe Sonia varnish. So I'm going to cover the entire surface in this. And again, we will speed this up a little bit. I like to do uh, a lot of tilting to spread out the base paint. I'll use a palette knife to get it to the edges, whatever works for you. You'll find your happy, your happy place when it comes to doing these things. Before I get into telling you these steps and everything, you see I'm putting down my colors. Now I'm just drizzling them across the canvas. I want to say something. This painting took me to hell and back, and I'm still not happy with it, 
but it's it's got its own special oomph, we'll say. <laughs> yeah, just stay till the end, you'll see. I made so many mistakes on this one that I look back now and I wish I never did that. First one being this gold. I made a gold cell activator. I had this strong lacing in my mind, veining through the pretty interference colors. It was just horrible. It was just too washed out looking. And um, the pink background was really throwing me off. Again, I only used it because I wanted to have some of that pink poking through my swipes, not have it as a whole background, but it was just, it threw me off. Once you're thrown off when you're creating something, it, everything seems to go downhill, I swear. But anyway, I wanted to show you this because there's a lot of learning lessons. So the next thing I did, I said, well, you know, let me use some black cell activator because I know those interference colors shine their best when you use a black cell activator. Now, this would have been fine if I had stopped at a certain point, and I'll show you where that point is in a few minutes here. Would have been fine if I stopped there, but again, I didn't. So once again, you have to learn through error. And this one was a big learning experience for me. So I created my swipes. All was going well. And, you know, I was really happy with how the colors looked. And of course, it's hard for you guys to see that uh, on camera, what I'm seeing. But I'll show you in a minute here with the flash just how pretty the colors are. All right, so here we go. Let me show you how pretty the interference colors are. And you have to try to envision this in the daylight with resin on it because this is what it looks like when you put the resin or the varnish on top. It just makes them shine and color shift and they're really, really sparkly. They're really beautiful. So that's, you know, how this part went. Everything was going fine. You can see these sections here where there's no lacing. I wish I had just done a swipe with the interference colors with no cell activator. That's what I wish I had done. I didn't though. So I had to work with this painting and try to turn it into something that was, you know, halfway decent. So we put this to bed to dry. And here it is three days later. Alrighty, so it is dry. And I want to point out a couple of things. And this will, will help you in the long run. Little tips, okay? So first of all, it dried. And the interference color shifting in here is going to be insane when I add the top coat of resin on it. All right? Um... I did it purposely on top of a pink uh, background because I wanted a lot of pink and violet uh, color shifting. When I say mother of pearl, it's going to be just something else, you see. You wait and see, I mean, but I want to point out a couple of things. So I did this on a wood panel, a quarter inch wood panel. Look at this right here. See this cracking? Now, this happened because the paint pooled right here. It kind of had nowhere to flow over. So it was a little bit thicker here on the edge. So you can see that cracking. I always tell people when you have cracking in the paint, it's either because the paint is a different consistency or it's thicker in one area. So this is a very good example of that. And it only happened on the edges. Okay, um, with these wood panels, sometimes when you're doing something like fluid art, uh, specifically acrylic pouring, it really just stops right at the edge. It doesn't continue to flow over like when you have a canvas and there's sides to keep pulling it down. When the, the canvas has a side and the paint is dripping over, it's pulling itself down and it pulls from the surface down the sides. So... 
this doesn't tend to happen, but yeah, it happened, but it's not a big deal because I'm altering this painting anyway, and those will just be parts that I cover up. But yeah, it dried beautifully other than that, all right? And um, I wanted to show you what I did to help me now with the next phase of this painting. So I took a piece of tracing paper and I laid it on top and I traced the areas of where the paint was, okay? And then I went in and I drew in areas that I want to change. So for example, coming through here, I want to have black. All right, you see what I did? So that's just a little cheat to uh, help you plan ahead instead of just sitting down with some paint and saying, okay, I'll do this. And then you get down to this part and you're like, oh wait, that doesn't look good up there. Just get yourself a pad of tracing paper and go ahead and do that. All right, sketch in your areas that you wanna change. So that's what I did. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step step each of the things I did. However, I'm not gonna show you, for example, I'm gonna be using crystals in this area up here. I'm gonna show you how to do the crystals up in this area, but I'm not gonna show you where I add them here, here, and here, because it'll be just way too long of a video. So for each step I do, I'll show you a small section of how to do it and then move on to the next step, okay? All right, so here come my problems. First of all, the painting moved slightly, so it's changed the design of the flow. So I thought, well, let me take my black, black out some of the areas, and we'll come back in and do some design work in those black areas later. However, I blacked out too much in some of the sections. Then I came in with my beautiful fantasy film and I glued it down with this gel medium or gloss gel, I should say. And I did not seal the edges well. I should have gone along the entire edge a second time after it had dried to make sure it was really dried down, you know, sealed down good. So that was my second mistake. Um, I went and did all this work with outlining areas and using my CERN relief outliners from Pebio. Did all this beautiful handwork. And then there was a disaster. But before I get to my disaster, let me show you how <laughs> I made my beautiful druzy crystals so i have some products here which are some epsom salt some sand some sparkly white glitters and some glitter flakes just throw a mishmash of sparkle into that bucket baby and pour in some resin mix it all together and you will have a dazzling display on your painting this sequin rain glitter from Win Modern Art was the winner of the whole entire piece. It is so beautiful. Wait till you see it. So now this is KS Liquid Art Ultra UV Resin, my favorite resin to use. I just mixed up a few ounces of it, poured it into the bucket with the crystals, and added only enough till it was like this, like this slosh. You don't want it pouring off the stick. You want it clumping off the stick. Look how beautiful that is. So at this point, the painting's looking really, really fantastic. I wish I had stopped right here, but, <laughs> you know, I'm a glutton for punishment, I'll tell you. So I went and added these crystal mixture here to certain areas on the canvas. And then I let that dry before I went any further. So here's my arch nemesis. <laughs> this beautiful, beautiful Sherbert pink just resin, uh, resin paste, sorry. I mixed some of this into some clear resin. You can buy all of the beautiful colors you need for your resin needs at artiststilldeath.com. They sell all of the great brands, like all the good Australian brands. They sell resin 
They sell wood shapes, all different things for resin art. Anyway, I wanted to do some fine lines with this pretty pink. And I put my resin into a bottle and was doing so. But what I did was I put too much down and it spread out way too much and it covered half of my pretty designs. So now you see all of my black is gone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I'm speeding through this because it's a very long video, but I lost all my black areas. I used a marker to outline some lines around the sections. And then I did a nice top coat of KS resin on it when it was ready for that. I then took some clear resin and drizzled it over my druzy crystal areas so that I can now do the final touch, which is that beautiful German glitter glass. It adds a beautiful touch to the crystals. So here we are outside. I wanted to show you this before I do anything else to it. I'm going to be covering up my paper areas because, or my film areas, I should say, because they just don't look right now with all that pink around. So <laughs> I wanted to show you how pretty they look under the resin though, but you can see here how my resin seeped over the edge of those. And yeah, it was kind of a mess, but I got a fix for that. But I wanted to show you how pretty they did look in the piece. <laughs> And I love that texture. Love, love, love the texture. So the learning lesson here is when you use resin, remember whatever width of a line that you place down on a canvas, it's going to flatten out, level out, and spread. And it's going to be double that width. So always remember to leave some room in between your areas so you don't end up with this. <laughs> Look at the interference colors, though. They are the other star of the show. A, I just love them. Absolutely love them. And the crystal areas are bananas. There's just so much sparkle in here. I still had a great time making it. And I hope you learned some lessons from this video. So now check out this area right here when I move the painting. You'll see the interference colors get much brighter. So they, they definitely, you know, light up depending on the direction that you're looking at them. And they're really pretty. You know, it's a different piece and I'm okay with that. It didn't go as planned. In the future, I will remember not to black out so much of my painting I will remember to level it more importantly because this time I didn't level it and my design moved quite a bit and that forced me to black out areas I didn't want to have to black out. I would get rid of the cell activator and just swipe the interference colors by themselves, let them dry and then come in and alter the painting and I would seal down the edges of that fantasy film much, much better than what I did. The main lesson here is not to rush, okay? So let's take one last look at our beautiful fantasy film before I go and cover it up. <laughs> so here's what I ended up doing. I ended up putting crystals over those areas and we're going to call this one done for now, okay? I love you all. Thank you so very much for joining me and putting up with my lunacy. Don't forget to check out the description for all the products, the discounts, ways to follow me. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all those fun places. And please consider subscribing to my channel. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And until the next time, my friends, happy pouring.